Hello, everyone, and welcome back to fifth grade math for today. I'm Miss Whitehead, and let's go ahead and get started. So question number one says, Victor has $60 in his wallet. He buys a basketball for $12.89 and a sled for $39.99. How much money does he have left? So we need to first understand what it is we need to do in this problem so that we can set it up correctly. Right. So he starts out with 60 bucks. OK, he buys a basketball. All right. What do you think that means if he's buying it? Is that money going back into his wallet or coming out of his wallet? It should be coming out of his wallet. Right. So that is subtraction. So we are going to subtract um, this amount. Um, I want to first add them up because if you go to a store, you buy everything right at the register, it's all added up, right? And then that one lump sum actually comes out of your account. So for me, it just makes sense to, to add it up first. Now, you may want to just start to subtract, that's up to you, okay? Um, I'm gonna add the $12.89 um, and the $39.99 first, okay? So nine plus nine is 18. I'm gonna carry the one. Nine and one is 10 plus eight more is 18. I'm gonna carry the one again. Nine plus one is 10. 10 plus two is 12. And I'm gonna carry that one again. Three plus one is four. Four plus one is five and bring down my decimal. Now he started with 60 bucks, he spent $52.88. We need to know how much is left, right, in his wallet. So we have $60. I'm going to write out that decimal and $52.88. Let's go ahead and subtract. Now, sometimes it can be tricky when you start to subtract and you see all these zeros, um, but we're just going to keep borrowing from the neighbor next door. And we'll talk about this more in class, okay, what that looks like, and we'll get to actually use um, the base 10 blocks and, you know, so we can actually see what is going on. Um, how are these numbers, you know, making the other digits larger, right? It'll make sense later on. Okay, so zero can't take away eight, so we're going to borrow from next door, right? Um, and that is actually going to become a nine, this is 10 because we just borrowed. So 10 minus eight is two, okay? Nine minus eight is one, okay? Zero, um, we're gonna have to borrow again. So the six becomes a five and this becomes a nine, okay? Nine minus two is seven and five minus five is zero. I'm just gonna leave that blank. And I'm going to bring down my decimal. So he has $7.12 in his wallet. Okay, um, let's move on to question two. 30 multiplied by 10 to the fourth power. Um, we've come in contact with this before. The 10 is our base number. The four is our exponent. Remember that the exponent tells you how many times to multiply the base number by itself. So what does that look like? Well, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Now in our previous um, math for today's, and we've covered this, we know that 10 times 10 is 100, uh, 100 times 10 is 1,000. So I'm just gonna write that under here. So all of this is 1,000, then multiply it by another 10, right? That is actually 10, thousand. Wow, that's a really big number. But here's a trick. If you notice, there's a four here. How many zeros do I have? Four zeros, right? So it's a little, a little shortcut there. So let's write our problem back out. So we have 30 multiplied by 10,000. Don't forget my comma. All right. 30 multiplied by 10 is 300. And I'm going to bring these extra zeros down, okay? And so your answer is 300,000. And I can also count here, how many zeros do I have here? I have one, two, three, four, five. And in my answer, I should have five zeros. One, two, three, four, five. And that's it for number two. 
All right, let's move on here. Write less than, greater than, or equal to to make the statement true. Um, these are decimals here, so don't think that they're um, commas. So let's set our um, problem up. Um, we're going to line those decimals up based on the place value. So we have 62 okay, and 381 thousandths. Um, and we have 62 and 831 thousandths. Now looking at each place value, um, I can see that the sixes are the same, the twos are the same, the three, oh, wait a minute, the tenths place um, is different here. The eight is larger than the three, so I can stop right there because I can see that this number is greater. And that alligator, again, I want it to eat the bigger number, and so I'm going to make sure that it is facing the larger number. So number four says round. Okay, this number to the nearest thousands place. Now in fifth grade, we, we don't go four digits past the decimal, right? We only do the three digits, right? To the thousands place. Um, so I know um, dealing with my decimal here, I have these places. So I have tens, hundreds, thousands. So I have zero, six, and four. And then I have a nine right here, right? So I know the four is in my thousands place. So I'm going to circle that number to the right of the four because that is the number that's going to determine what happens to the number in the thousands place, right? So paying attention to my rules, um, four or less, let the number rest. Five or more, we're going to raise the score. So nine is five or more. So that four is going to change. So my new number here to the thousands place is one and 65 thousandths. All right, that was a lot of work. Um, I hope it made sense to you. Um, if not, please come and talk to me in class and I will see you tomorrow.